because in a way the sequel is sort of a continuation of the first film but it takes place years later that's why it takes place years later let me explain there have been well let me explain like this that you know that there have been a lot of series out there a lot of animated live action series animated live action films that when they have spawned a sequel which have either been made for television direct to video or even theatrical that when that sequel comes out sometimes it doesn't come out two years later and the characters when they bring it out they know that people are not going to look at the same char the characters the same way they saw in the first film that they're going to want to see them a little older and that's what they do I mean even when you do a movie a live action or an animated movie based on a live action or animated series Sometimes you want to do a movie where you have the characters older. A good example of this is one of my personal favorites, a Goofy movie. They aged Max by a few years. So, again, I really don't have a problem with Secret of Nim 2 because in a way it's a continuation of the first one, but years later. And when you think about it, yeah, Timmy spent most of the first film sick in bed with pneumonia. Yeah, he only had one line at the end of the film. But the thing is, it's always that character. It's always a character like that, that if a sequel is spawned off, if a sequel does spin off from it, or spawned off, that that character that was like Timmy, that was immobile for most of the first film, and only had like one line or two lines at the end of that first film it, oh, you know that it's always going to be that character that if a sequel is made that's going to be the focal point of the sequel and that's what they did Timmy became the focal point of the sequel now yes I will agree that the prophecy to save the rats from Nim was a self prophecy that it was done that the only thing Tim, Timmy saved the rats from was from Timmy's own brother because Timmy's own brother when he got caught got corrupted into this whacked out scientist mad scientist mouse out of pure I guess out of jealousy basically when he got captured and experimented on he whacked, he let his jealousy whack him out if you know what I mean allowed him to go his jealousy made him go crazy so again though again even though the prophecy I do agree was a self prophecy where Timmy had to save the rats of Nim from his brother because his brother like I said went whack if you will went wacky because of being caught and experimented on and basically allowing his jealousy to do so The truth is, besides that, it was still a continuation. It was still a continuation. And when you it's also another way of introducing some new characters. Like when they introduced Jenny. You know that you can't when they introduced Jenny, they introduced her because you knew you couldn't just have Timmy as the focal point of the film and just focus on him and that's it. No, you had to have a love interest. You can't have a movie, whether it's a sequel or not, without a love interest. I mean, if you take a look at Secret of Nim, the original version, if you take a look at the original movie, Secret of Nim, when J Justin is introduced to Miss Frisbee, Miss Frisbee starts to fall for Justin, but she's got to, like, you know, clear her mind a little bit, like, kind of excuse herself from that, but she starts to fall for him. So you know there's a little bit of a romantic attraction there. But again, like I said, um, you know, the reason Jenny was introduced was so that Timmy could have a love interest. And that's what happened. And to correct Doug on a, on a note that he made towards the end of his review on it, 
they you know they weren't just in love at the end of the film and that wasn't a cliff note no if if you listen to if you look if you kind of pay attention during the point where Jonathan and this caterpillar a Cecil I believe his name is do the song of magic mystery show you see the attraction there, right there. You start to see an attraction and an interest and a romantic kind of deal developing between both Timmy and Jenny there. So, you know, over, and, and yes, I, I do agree. She's the only one that does anything in this film. She's the only one that wants to do anything in this film. So... Again, even though I do agree the prophecy part of it was self prophesized and Timmy based in and that the prophecy was Timmy had to save the rats of Nim from his brother because his brother got whacked out, you know overall besides that, I thought it was a pretty good film. Now yes, we could have done without the musical numbers. We could have done without them. But Again, it all depends on who took over as the directors and the writers. Because sometimes different writers and directors, if they're doing an animated film and they're doing a sequel to that, well, if they're doing an animated film sequel, I should say, sometimes, you know, they're going to want to add musical numbers to it, even if the original never had any. So, uh, overall, again, though, I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was pretty good. And, you know, that's just my opinion. I know there's going to be a lot of people that may disagree with that. Uh, but that's your opinion. You're entitled to it. But overall, I thought Doug did a pretty good job with his sequel month as a nostalgia critic. Overall, I thought he did a good job. I definitely got a huge laugh. I was rolling, I was rolling on the floor, floor laughing, if you will, when he was breaking and destroying the ne Never Ending Story 3 disc. I really got a crack out of that. <laughs> So, um, overall, you know, like I said, so again, overall, and I know I've been saying overall a lot doing this, I thought, you know, again, I thought he did a great job, and I hope he did, keeps it up. I hope whatever month he does next, he probably tops this one and makes it better. You know, hey, maybe he could do an 80s month, where he looks at the 80, looks at the, well, if he does a top 12 list, maybe he could do... 12, 24, 36, 48. Maybe he could do something like the top 50 animated shows of the 80s. Hey, that would be a whole month worth. <laughs> but, um, again, I thought he did a pretty good job and hope he keeps it up. And I'm wondering what he's got planned for his third anniversary. You know what my suggestion would be on his third anniversary? Do a Power Rangers spoof. You know, where he... You know, kind of lead towards Linkara and all that, and have them do a Power Rangers spoof. You know what I'm saying? Have Critic, Linkara, possibly Chick, maybe Chick with the Goggles, maybe Mars Girl, or whoever, be the Power Rangers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh, overall, great, 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 sequ uh, great job on Sequel Month, and that's all I'm going to say. Sorry if this was in multiple parts. Uh, I wish I could have done it straight through, but I don't have that privilege no more. So, till next time, I'm out.